Welcome back to the Dylan Shea channel today. We're doing eight players that have proved everyone wrong. Now, there will be more players that have proved people wrong, but I couldn't think of any more. Well, I could, but I, I didn't want to make the video too long. So if you have any that I miss out on, let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. In number eight, I have gone with Kepa Arithabalaga. Uh, is that how you say it? Uh, Kepa is in number eight, um, mainly because I think everyone thought there's no way he could get into this Chelsea side. There's no way he can turn his career around. But he has done just that, pretty much. He has started seven in the Premier League, more coming sort of late, um, replacing Mendy, actually, because he's been, well, quite bad, Edward Mendy. Kepa, though, in those seven games, has kept... Has kept, kept, kept? Kepa, in those seven games, has kept four clean sheets. Jesus, I can't speak. Conceded five, but actually has a post-shot XG of eight. So he's actually overperforming by three goals, keeping three goals out pretty much. You can see that in his performances. Some of the saves that he has made have been ridiculous. I look at the Aston Villa game in particular. I think that's the best performance from a keeper this season. He made a triple save and it wasn't one of those triple saves where, you know, like those triple saves where the player just hits the ball at the keeper. It wasn't that. He made three very good saves. The second one and the third one are unbelievable. Also in that game, he made a great save against Danny Ings, a header from about two yards. I don't know how he saved that one, but Kepa has really turned his career around. He has an average sofa score rating of 7.51 as well, which is the highest of any Chelsea player. Come on, who would have seen this coming at the start of the season? I don't think anyone. There was one game we did concede four to Brighton. Uh, yeah, not a very good game. I didn't really think, though, there could have been more that he could have done. He did get mugged off by Trossard, but I don't, know what, I don't know what he's supposed to do there. You've got to dive in. Trossard takes it around him and scores. And Kepa actually got taken off at half time. I don't think he was the problem in that game. Uh, maybe he was injured. I don't know. But he also played against Bournemouth just recently as well. I think there'll be another set of games before this is out, but... He played against Bournemouth, which is the most recent one whilst I'm filming this, and kept another clean sheet. In number seven, I've got Diogo Dallo. Now, I don't think Dallo is an amazing player, but he's a lot better than what I thought he was, and probably you, surely, which was that he's crap. He also has a high average rating on sofa score of 7.06. I'm not saying the average uh, rating really means everything, but I think it's a cool thing to look at. You sort of realise how good a player is playing when they play against your side. I'm a Spurs fan and against Man United, he dominated us. He was so good in that game. Um, and yeah, he really stood out to me as someone who's on form for Man United in that game. He started 13 out of 13 in the Prem. Well, until it was 14 and 15, but that's because he's uh, been injured and he got suspended. I think he's injured for a while now as well, a couple of weeks. It'll be interesting to see if he can continue that form when he comes back. The one thing I'd say against Diogo Dallo is the attacking output isn't there. Uh, I think he has zero goals, one assist. You want more from your fullback, but he looks so much more confident. And his defensive abilities have, have surprised me this year. Really solid for Man United. Now, Granit Xhaka in sixth place. Now, I still don't think Granit Xhaka is an amazing player. Um, and I don't think I ever will. He has been amazing for Arsenal this year. Um, I just don't think I'm willing to say that he's like very good because it's Granite Xhaka and that I'm a Spurs fan. So there you go, Granite. Sorry. He has three goals and four assists this season, just in the Premier League, that is. So impressive, honestly. Him and Thomas Partey right now is, is one of the best partnerships in the league. He's averaging a goal every four games. Like, I mean, that would be good for... And number 10, that would be okay for a winger. But no, Granit Xhaka is averaging a goal every four games. And he has four assists to go with it as well. There are two assists in particular. Him and Jesus seem to have a bit of an understanding. Xhaka on the left-hand side has sometimes cut in, played in a beautiful cross to Jesus and he's headed it in. That looks like a dangerous uh, play that Arsenal have used a few times this season. But three years ago, Granit Xhaka was... Well, he walked off the pitch and swore at the Arsenal fans, I think. So, yeah, to, to predict this three years ago, even last season, I think would have been 
crazy. But yeah, fair play to Granite Xhaka. He's proved me wrong. And surely he's proved you wrong too. At number five, I've gone with Andreas Pereira. Now it turns out that this Brazilian player is actually Brazilian and that he can actually play football. Now, I don't know what it was about Man United, but no one rated him. The only thing he did good really was that goal in the friendly. He was a laughing stock at Manchester United. Don't know why. Well, I do know why because he was terrible, but for some reason he's come to Fulham and he has been crucial in getting Fulham where they are, which is in the top half of the Premier League at the moment. It's funny because when you look at his, uh, his stats, they're not incredible, like even every single stat. Like he has two goals, four assists. That's not awful. It's not, it's not amazing either. He also has a pass accuracy of 68%, which is quite low. So yeah, for, for a midfielder, it's because he often tries these ridiculous passes. Whenever I watch Fulham, he just tries about three a game. I'm like, like that is not going to work. But something that's really impressed me with Andreas Pereira and something I didn't see coming was the work rate. Really didn't see that coming at all. Um, he's been huge, you know, in their pressing. The whole Fulham team have been really hard working this year. And he's he's not a luxury player. He has been involved in that in that um, style of play that Marco Silva has implied on this Fulham team. To me, every time I watch Fulham, he just sticks out like a sore thumb. He just... He has that quality that, you know, Fulham maybe lack now and then. Uh, and he just seems to be at the heart of everything, I think, when, when I watch Fulham. And he also nearly scored a ridiculous goal versus Crystal Palace the other day. Uh, the touch he, he made was sensational, honestly. And then he shot, uh, he hit the post, I think. So he was very close to scoring one of the best goals of the season, I think. Let's go on to number four. I have Marcus Rashford. Now, I don't know if I was alone in this, but last year I completely wrote off Marcus Rashford. Thought he had to leave Man United. I thought he was the next Lingard. Thought he was going to West Ham or, or somewhere else. Um, but he has completely turned it around. Maybe he just needed a rest. I'm not sure. He has, he has played a lot of games in his career, Marcus Rashford. I am one of these people who think that footballers should have a bit more rest for the overall quality of the league. I always remember when Harry Kane, his career was going a bit like this. Not, not maybe as steep, but just like a little bit down here. He's got 17 goals in 2019, um, Harry Kane. Or it was 2018. And he had about six months off for COVID uh, in 2020. And he came back a completely different player. Looked physically so much stronger. He was quicker. He just looked more energised. And I think maybe that's what's happening to Rashford now. He's on really good form. Just scored against Wolves about 30 minutes ago, actually. So yeah, Rashford has really turned it around. In the 1920 season, Rashford scored 17 goals and 7 assists last year. He's got four goals in 25 games. I mean, there was just a massive drop off. Um, and I really didn't, I couldn't see him getting it back. And I think the World Cup, his impact on England there was massive for his confidence and just didn't see this coming at all. He has five goals, sorry, six goals now actually, and three assists uh, in 16 games this season for Manchester United. And one thing that I think is a big factor, last year he was averaging 0 0.9 shots a game. This season, he's averaging 2.3. The more you shoot, the more you're likely you are to score. It just shows that he's more willing to get into these positions. Maybe he's feeling physically a lot better to get into these positions. And that he's just playing better. And he has more confidence to take on players and shoot as well. Next in third place is another Manchester United man. It's Lissandro Martinez. Now, a lot of people thought this was a good sign-in. A lot of people thought this was an upgrade on Lindelof and Maguire. But the, the reaction to his height, <laughs> included myself, I will put myself in this one. Uh, I didn't think it would really work out for him in this league. And they were probably a little bit over the top. Um, I think Jamie Carragher was the worst. I mean, I just said I think it would be a problem. Jamie Carragher said he's not going to work in this league. <laughs> and I think there have been a few games where he has struggled. I think the Brentford game, I thought the Man City game, not good at all in those games. He's turned it around. Lately, he's been very good, like really good. Him and Varane have a very good partnership there. It's one of the best in the league. Look what he did to a, a physically strong Harry Kane. Um, pocketed him, absolutely pocketed him. Kane did nothing that game. Martinez was aggressive onto him. And Martinez, all the things that he needed to work for him because he's five foot nine, which look, it is a bit of a problem, you know. 
but he is small. He makes up for it in his technical ability, his aggression, his tackling, his man marking, his strength. I think he's a really good player. And I didn't think he would be that good. Um, so he's proved me wrong. I know everyone didn't think he would be bad, but I think a lot of people were very worried about his size. In number two, I've gone for Mitrovic. Now, everyone doubted him. We wondered third, fourth, or was it the fifth time he was in the Premier League? Could he do it? Uh, I think a lot of people were sceptical about him. He's delivered. He is the fourth top scorer in the league, which is obviously very impressive considering he's playing for Fulham. But the next stat is it more impressive. And it's just a simple, he has 10 goals in 13 games this season. That is incredible for Fulham, by the way. If Haaland was not in this league, we would look at that as so insanely good for Mitrovic. But Haaland, alien that he is, just makes everyone else look terrible. He is an absolute menace to deal with for defenders, Alexander Mitrovic. Just a pain in the arse. Uh, I would hate to mark him. I would absolutely hate it. So strong, he's good at holding the ball up and his finishing is very good as well. And he's just extremely strong. Look at what he did to Trent on the first day of the season. I mean, he just absolutely bullied him. And he's been doing it to defenders all season. I cannot believe he's been this good. At the start of the season, we was all wondering, could he do it in the Premier League? Is he just a championship level player? But now I'm looking at it thinking, if I'm, if I'm a Man United, Chelsea, owner, manager, why not look at Alexander Mitrovic? I think he could be a good option. I think he's a, a fantastic player. Now, in number one, there can only be one player. There can only be one. And that is right. It is Miguel Almiron. Okay, let me, let me just say something. You know how the Ballon d'Or is now every season instead of every year? Isn't Almiron a contender for the Ballon d'Or? He's in the top 10, surely. I thought he was average. You thought he was average. Jack Grealish thought he was worse than average. But he's been top three players in the league this season. Jack Grealish really started Miguel Almiron's villain arc. And it's, it's not gone down well for Jack Grealish because Miguel Almiron is now 10 times the player that Jack Grealish is. Miguel Almiron had four goals. Yeah, he had four goals in the Goal of the Month award. He had four contenders. He had six goals that month, four of them in Goal of the Month. The one was just insane, the volley against Fulham. It's one of the best months a player in the Premier League has ever had. He scored another ridiculous goal lately as well. Another one against Leicester, I think. It's one of the more random turnarounds in football, but I am all here for it. Miguel Almiron. We all want to see him do well. Not too well, though. You know, we don't want Newcastle winning leagues and stuff yet. But I cannot believe what has happened to Almiron. If you have enjoyed this video, who else would you add to this list? I want to know, who would you take off? Do you think I've got one wrong? In the comments as well, who you would, who you would add to this list. Subscribe if you are new. And thank you for watching.